All right, I've already downloaded the file and put it on my desktop there. It's, it's called... <laughs> this, this is one of the reasons I'm not going to talk very long, because I this haze has got my sinuses all plugged up, as you can guess. I'm, my, my sinuses are plugged up. I'm going to just copy this file, and I'm going to... Uh, do, do, and everything dealing with Silicon Labs is in the Sci Labs. I've been working with the examples directory, so I'm just going to continue working with the examples directory. And I'm going to put it in the same directory as everything else C8051F850X underscore that there. I'm just going to put it there. And I'm just going to create a new folder for it called Analog Test. Test right there. And I'm just going to post, paste it there. Analog Test right there. And the reason I pasted it there, there is so when I open up Silicon Labs, it's easy to find that there. And it's the white right directory. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead and open up Silicon Labs. And there's, I actually have an IDE I haven't used much before that I'm going to be talking about probably after the break. But we're going to go ahead and open up analog test right here. Right here. So this is the file. And let me spend a few minutes talking about this file right here. This is a, one of their, that there, I just made some simple modifications to make it work. Right there. On the, if you look at the board, and I, and I realize that you haven't gone and got the board yet, but let me go ahead and pull pull my board out here. I'm going to unplug my internet. I don't need internet anymore. But there, if you pull the, if you if you pull out the board, you'll notice that on the board there is a potentiometer, potentiometer right there. There's a little pot on the on this board. Now if you look at the schematic of the board, right here, tool stick right there. And if you look at this right here, that potentiometer is tied to port 1.2, right there. Everyone see where that's tied to 1.2? Right there. And it goes from 3.3 volts down to 0 volts as I turn that. Now, in the, when I was testing this yesterday in my office, or my, I should say office, I'm used to having an office, but in my, in my little cubicle out there, I drug out my scope and I put the scope on port 1.2 and I was able to measure the voltage and it does go from 0 to 3.3 to, um, volts as expected right there. So, so, we, so our analog port is tied to that there. So if I go back to my code and I look at my code, it's set up to use timer 2, which is a timer we've been used right there, and the input voltage must be given time. There's some calculations. I'll, I'll go through these after our break on how we set this up. That there, but we have to give it. One of the things we have to do when we set up our that there, ignore the baud rate. We, we're not using baud rate here at, at all. That there, th those that there. This program was written actually to be tied to a desktop computer through the serial port. I wish I had serial ports available to us, but uh, I don't think these computers have serial ports. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't see them on that there. And uh, even then, to get the wiring to, co to connect to the, the right pins on here is kind of a, requires an adapter. So I, we're not set up to do serial ports communication. So I completely blocked that part of the code out right there. So, a matter of fact, I should probably just go ahead and void out the U R zero init. Yeah, I, I commented it out there, so it's not called, but I may as well. And I my timer to init, IDC init, 
Yeah, I see it. I commented out the function there, right there. So it's not there. So we're not using we're not using the the UR. The UR actually would make this program a lot more pleasant to run because you can actually turn the pot and see the see the display change that there. But let me just kind of go through here. We set up a system clock that they're on this a little bit differently here, here, but we set up the system clock, we initialize the ports, and we set up timer two initialize, and we initialize ADC zero. And I'll go through those initialization routines real quick. And then we do the standard while one. This is like the blinky that used the interrupt. Our ADC conversion and re reading the analog to digital conversion is done in the interrupt service routine. So the way that the analog, the system clock just basically sets the system clock to 24.5 megahertz and uses the internal clock right there. Or right there. So that just sets the system clock. That's all, all, all we're doing right there. And there our port initialization, I'm just turning the LED on. We, we're not really using it for anything, but the the main thing is that there is that we're setting port 1.2 as an analog port right there. So we're setting port 1.2 as an analog port right there. And if I went back and I ran the the system configuration configuration wizard you might see that there's a slightly different command for that there. Right there, at their peripherals, port I.O. And we're setting port 1.2 as an analog right there. And unfortunately, I've got to plug that out too, that there. And it does a, it says port one mod is equal to zero FB. This code here just simply, no, we're, 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 we just simply sets that using the and or with not, it just clears that bit right there. So it, it does the same same thing. You can do it either way. There's, I don't know if I mentioned before when it comes to programming that this thing, that there's probably five different correct ways of doing it, which makes our life interesting at times. So which way is right? That they're all right. That there. So we enable the crossbar. We we don't have to enable UART zero. I could comment that out. That we're not using UART zero that there. So all we're doing is we're. I've, I'm enabling the LED as a push-pull output. I'm not using it, but uh, the, only thing, the only thing I'm using right now is the analog port. I set my timer up right there, clear, set, use the system clock, and this basically is going to reload value for about 10 microseconds, set to reload immediately and start the timer. This basically is going to set this thing up to periodically interrupt that there, we could change how often we want this to do that by changing our countertop, our, right? That there, we could change that to our reload value. That there, all, all we're doing here is just setting this timer up to periodically interrupt the processor, and we when we enable that, we have to set some things here that ADC zero is disabled. To, Conversions triggered are configured on timer two overflows. So every time timer two overflows, this thing is going to call this function. I have not talked about how having to set up the excessive successive approximation resolution clock and talked about how that's done on the ADC. Well, we set this up to be a one gain gain one mode. And there, in other words, we don't multiply it by anything, and we use it in 10-bit mode, right there. We disable the 12-bit mode, full power mode disabled, positive input, right there. Ground ref the, the reference is, gra is ground. The 
the reference is that is uh, is VDD. So we're setting this up between zero and VDD. Now what what we have here is we. We, we've got this at 3.3 volts. Here's our pot right here, and this is zero volts, and here's our pot right there. Now, we're going to read a number between, when we read this A to D, it's a 10-bit number right there, 10-bit number. And 10 bits, one right there, this is 3FF, it's going to equate to 3.3 volts and zero is going to equate to zero volts right there. Right there. So we do some calculations right there on that. 3.3 volts and actually I, my calculator is right there. Three FF is decimal ten twenty four, so ten twenty four is going to be is equal to three volts. So we come up with a formula here that's going to equate the two of those th together here, and you'll see that formula in a second here. I didn't write rewrite the formula, but the formula should work for what we're saying right there. So this basically, and we we enable the conversion complete interrupt at the so this is all set up. Ignore the everything on the UART right there. This is what happens when we increment right here. Right there. If measurements equals 0, 24, there. This does 20, this does 2048 measurements and then in a loop right there. And it does a, and it, and it gives the, average right there so so what this is going to do this is interrupting this thing quite frequently very very frequently but it's only going to show the result after it's taken 2048 measurements we could do it more often we could do it less often so this thing's measuring constantly but it's only going to display the answer after 2048 that there so that there because what it's going to do is, it, this line here just simply reads the ADC. That's going to read the, the analog digital conversion, and it's going to decrement the number of measurements we need to take. If our, if, we, if our measurements are at zero, we're going to go ahead and reset our counter back to 2048 for the next round. And then we're going to say our result is going to be equal to the accumulator divided by 2048, that's the number of measurements we've taken right there. And then I just said that on the calculator, and I had the calculator here, the calculator, that 3FF is 1023, right? So our formula for our result is 1023 is going to be 3.3 volts, which is 3,300 millivolts up there. And then we divide it by 10, 1023 up there, which is zero. So, so this is going to give our voltage out right there. So when I run this, it actually works fairly well. We rebuilt this, and we got an error. And it's probably something I commented out. I shouldn't have commented. Missing before void. Line 143. Line 143 is really much higher up in the program than I thought it was. Missing semicolon before void. Interrupt the prototype. 
right before me. Oh. I put my little dash dash to comment that out before the after the V, so. Okay, now now she works. Hopefully it works in hardware. We're we're not gonna my board here. Okay, I, here's my box, so the board can't be very far away, right? There's my little adapter. This is not... Okay, there it is. <laughs> not there. So, so, you know, not there. So, I go ahead and I... I connect this and don't ask me why it always that does that flash box now what I want to do here is very simple I just want to see if it works so I'm going to set up a watch value for multi millivolt right there so millivolt the value is right there and I'm going to put a breakpoint right here because I just want to I just want to see if this is working right there so if I run this, now what I discovered is that I have to run it twice before the, and why is it, there we go. So if I turn it all the way this way, there's my 3300 volts. I turn it all the way to the other end, it's zero. I put somewhere in the middle, it's 1.8 volts right there. I turn it a little bit more this way, 1.45, 2.6, and as I get all the way to the other end, 3.3 volts. So I'm, I'm moving the potentiometer, and you can see that the value that I'm reading is changing. So I'm actually reading the analog port at this point right there. Now I could do something here, fairly straightforward here, is I can say, we, we, we've set up our, uh, let's go back here, our LED. Make sure our LED is on the right port. Right there. So it's, that's been is port 1.0. Port 1.0 is an LED right there. So, so LED is main. We've set our, we've left our LED as a as a push pull right there. And this is this comment is, is wrong because I I changed our changed the LED to one point right there. So hopefully enable the LED 1.0 right there. And I could say for example right here if millivolt is millivolt is greater than we'll say 1 point or 1500 LED equals zero else LED equals one. Hopefully that works. And what did I do wrong here? One error else. All right, that should be the Greater than that there. Do I need to put a semicolon after that there? Usually you don't. That doesn't look right. That's definitely going to give me an error there. No, nope, that didn't. It wants this. It wants that semicolon <laughs> for some reason. That there. Okay. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and re-download this. And this time I'm going to run it. And I'm just going to turn the, potenti turn the potentiometer and you'll notice that the LED turns on and off right there as I go through that 1.5 brake mark right there. So, so I can control outputs. If I, for example, if I had a fan, I want to turn on when the temperature got above a certain point or something like that. So this is a way that we can read an analog voltage right there. And you'll see as I turn the thump, thump, thump right there. So, but this is basically how the, the aided analog digital works. And we can have up to eight analog inputs on this processor. So, that there. So, and I figured since everything I teach you today, you're probably not going to remember, so I'm not going to go through any details that there. You know, you're getting ready to go on break. But I figured, at least go ahead and, you know, tr run this program, play with it. You know, you can put this line in if you want. You can change different levels right there. But again, you know, I left the LED so that I can just show that we can also make decisions based on that there. And I can put a break point in here if we want that there. This just keeps me from doing the break point right there. And I can put multiple levels in there. So if it's greater than, say, if it's, if it's less than the other one, turn on the LED. Yeah, in other words, you can do, because you got two LEDs on here. We only set up one. So with that said, go get boards and you do it. That there. So, and I'm going to stop the recording. That there. As I said, I wasn't going to talk.